Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. Got a story sent to me by almost everybody. <laughs> so thank you. Anytime you see a story that might be interesting, you want to know my opinion on it, send it to me. And I dig through them and I try to do them as often as I can and to take care of as many people as possible. This one's in the news everywhere. So you may have heard about this, but again, I'll give you my insights. Krispy Kreme has told a man to stop reselling their donuts. Or the headline, as written by Deanna Weniger of the Pioneer Press in Minnesota, says, Krispy Kreme not sweet on college kids selling to Minnesotans tells him to quit. Krispy Kreme Donuts took a bite out of a St. Paul's college student's plan to sell their product to hungry Minnesotans, telling him on Thursday to cease all operations. Now here's what happened. The Pioneer Press ran an article about Jason Gonzalez and how he had a business where he would drive eight hours to Iowa to buy donuts retail, bring them back to his place in Minnesota, and then sell them to people in Minnesota who wanted to buy Krispy Kreme donuts. Because the last Krispy Kreme store left Minnesota 11 years ago, leaving a dearth of Krispy Kreme donuts as far as the eyes could see in Minnesota. <laughs> so Gonzalez said, I know they told one of the big managers in Nebraska directly, and he called me, uh, said Gonzalez. The company's corporate office is in North Carolina. He said corporate told him to cease and desist. They told him. Now, Krispy Kreme didn't explain the move, but promised to investigate. Uh, so the company said in a statement on Sunday, we have become aware of Jason's situation, which involves one of our well-intended locations and are looking into this. We appreciate Jason's passion for Krispy Kreme and his entrepreneurial spirit as he pursues his education. But here's the deal. They didn't sue him. They didn't send him a cease and desist letter. Somebody called him on the phone and just said, you need to stop doing this. I got news for you. I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney for 28 years, as you might know. And if you want to get something done legally, you don't just call somebody and go, hey, you either file a lawsuit or you send some kind of written demand letter or cease and desist letter. But the idea that a phone call is going to be taken seriously by anybody in the legal world I get phone calls every day from the IRS saying I'm going to jail. I get phone calls from the Department of Justice saying they found my car burning on the Mexican border. I get phone calls from my own phone number. Okay, So phone calls are meaningless for the most part. If somebody wants to give you a quick heads up, that's fine. A legal action usually involves some kind of paper with words written on it. Now, call me crazy, but that's just what I've seen in 28 years of practicing law. So all of the reports that Krispy Kreme is coming down on this guy like a ton of bricks, no, someone made a phone call, okay? And it wasn't even from the headquarters. So someone made a phone call. That person may be rogue for all we know. If there was something official going on, someone in the headquarters would have actually mailed him a letter. Again, it's old school, but that's how a lot of things are done legally. So um, Gonzalez is known locally as the donut guy. And he's about to make his 20th run to Iowa on Saturday, but then he had to tell his thousands of Facebook followers the gig is up. I bear some bad news, he posted. Unfortunately, the run for this Saturday will not be taking place. As I've been told, I have to shut down operations. Again, told. Gonzalez was told his sales created a liability for the company, which has benefited from thousands of dollars paid by Minnesotans for the donut deliveries. Gonzalez bought the donuts out of his profits and did not receive a discount from the store in Clive, Iowa that supplied them. He's buying the donuts retail. Once he owns them, he owns them. He can do anything he wants with them. As long as he's not trading on the name Krispy Kreme or advertising or claiming he is Krispy Kreme or claiming he represents Krispy Kreme, he can take them and do anything he wants with them. He can eat them all himself. He can give them away. He could charge a delivery fee. There's nothing wrong with what this guy's doing. The idea that some rogue manager, not even from headquarters, told him to stop. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. If you're in Minnesota, I would. If, if you're in Michigan, I'd defend you for free. I would. I, 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 would, I would hold a press conference with you right now and say, we're going to continue reselling Krispy Kreme donuts unless somebody else out there makes donuts, wants us to resell theirs. And maybe there's Dunkin' Donuts around. Who knows? Uh, so there you go. Each trip, he stuffed his Ford Focus full of up to 100 boxes of 12 count donuts, charging between $17 to $20 per box. Some customers spent nearly $100 each time he came through with a delivery. They ponied up not only for the love of the uniquely glazed yeast confection, which, by the way, is the best advertising Krispy Kreme can buy, 
but because they like the idea of helping an enterprising student pay his way through college at Metropolitan State University in St. Paul. You could just call it a delivery fee. I mean, seriously. What's he studying? I hope he's not studying business. This should be too obvious. Scrolling through all the comments has definitely been pretty upsetting how frustrated everyone is, he said. Most customers expressed dismay at the news, having made plans with relatives and friends to enjoy the donuts. <laughs> Others struggled to understand the logic of the decision and offered to start a petition. What is with people and their petitions? <laughs> Sorry, it's another topic altogether. <laughs> I could do a whole video on petitions. Several told him about the joy the donuts had brought them and thanked him for his efforts. One customer wrote in the Facebook comments, Well, just so you know, one of the customers has cancer and you brought her amazing joy. She was so happy to get her box and all the memories she had growing up came flooding back. I know to some people it's just donuts, but to her it wasn't. Gonzalez said he didn't plan to fight it, but we'll be looking for a new enterprise to help pay for college the 21-year-old senior, senior is studying accounting at Metropolitan State. Life happens, and it could be a sign that something else is meant to be. Well, you know, um, <laughs> Jason, if you want to throw in the towel because you got one wacky phone call from somebody who's not authorized to speak for the corporation, throw in the towel, okay? If somebody else in that town wants to make money selling Krispy Kreme donuts, or Jason, if you rethink it, what you want to do is... You simply go buy the donuts, bring them back, and charge a delivery fee and say, I am not authorized by Krispy Kreme to do this. I'm doing this with my own volition. I am simply delivering the donuts that people want me to go pick up for them. Absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Go ahead and do that. Knock yourself out. It's insanity to suggest otherwise. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Like I said, the idea that you got a phone call and you're going to shut things down is crazy. I did a story a while back. I forgot which episode it was. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if I can even find it because I'm not sure what it was titled. But I got a crazy phone call once from a guy who threatened me with legal action because Rodentrack.com ran an article and included something that some writer at Rodentrack.com that wasn't me had gotten their hands on and they published it. And the guy got frustrated when he couldn't get a hold of any of the people at Rodentrack.com except for me. Because, again, I'm so easy to get a hold of. The guy left me a threatening voicemail. So I called him back. And he goes, thanks for calling me back. And I go, dude, don't thank me. Why did you threaten me? And he goes, well, I'm trying to get a hold of somebody at Rodentrack.com. I said, well, you understand I'm a freelance writer for them. And I, I, I'm i like 18 names below the person you want to speak to. And he goes, yeah, I called all of them too. And I said, did you threaten all of them? He goes, what threat? I go, in your message to me, you said that you were going to sue me or take legal action or get the legal involved or something. And he goes, well, yeah. And I said, did you catch my message on my outgoing message in my voicemail? It says, I'm an attorney. And he goes, uh, no, but why? And I go, I sue people for fun. Do you think I care? Do you think, do you, do you really think threatening to sue me is going to help you move the ball down the field? And he goes, well, I just want someone to call me back. I go, good, I called you back. Did, did that help you any? He goes, well, can you get this story pulled down off roadandtrack.com? I go, no, you called the wrong person. And he goes, okay. And I go, you called the wrong person and threatened them with legal action? Okay, so my whole point here is the idea that someone called you and said you need to stop doing this. Again, I have dozens of examples. I've had people email me and say, Steve, you need to take that article down you just put up. Steve, you need to take down that video you just put up. No, I don't. You need to stop selling Krispy Kreme donuts. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> But again, it's obviously a hole in the market. This is the best advertising they've ever gotten, which I feel bad admitting that because me talking about it's more advertising. But if this guy doesn't do it, someone else should and just say, I am buying them and I'm delivering them. Sell them for the exact price you got. Take orders in advance and charge for delivery. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. And like I said, if this happened in Michigan, I'd defend the guy for free. Unfortunately, I'm not in Minnesota where this guy is. And Minnesota is the land of ice and snow. So, <laughs> hey, I'm just joking. Michigan is too. So that's the story about the Krispy Kreme telling the guy to shut down his operations. Personally, I don't think he should. But hey, that's just me. So there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye.